let's get started. Um, we are going to use several different colors today, but I do uh, recommend that you get your black out first, but um, because I want you to outline as soon as you get your black on your paint. So when I say outline, you're just gonna get all of these lines here like we normally do and then just let it sit for a second and then come back to the colors. So I'm going to do that now because we need this black to dry. But don't worry, I'm gonna get right back to telling you everything you need. So we're just gonna outline, not too heavy, very, very light. Well, not too light, but don't put a blob of black paint down. All right, now we got the squiggly line going towards the back. Yeah, we need the black to rest while we get all of our other colors together because when black mixes with all the colors we're using, it does not look good. So, the sketch may seem a little chaotic, but it's not, we're gonna piece it off. So we're gonna go ahead and outline the medallion. That's just a nice circle. And then we're going to, that's a shadow, and everything will make sense in a little while. All right, got the king cake which I learned is like a very large cinnamon roll. It's really delicious. Okay. So just get all of these lines. All of these lines. Just using basic black acrylic paint right now. All right. So there's the king cake. And then there's some medallions down here and you can add more medallions at the end if you want to. All right, so that's what the outline is gonna look like. Okay, now let's get to our colors. So we are going to have some white, just some basic white. Uh, we're gonna do some ultramarine blue I am using, for my red today, I want to do a permanent magenta. So if you have any magenta lying around, that would be perfect because it just makes that really pretty, vibrant Mardi Gras purple. Um, we're going to use some cad yellow. Then we are going to use just some grass green. Let's see. And we'll need your black, which you already have. I'm using raw sienna. And we are going to do any shade of gold that you want. And lastly, I have some burnt umber. That's going to be for the bread filling. So, let's go ahead and mix the colors that um, we're going to use. So, if you have a tube of purple, that works too. I just really like the purple that comes from the magenta and the ultramarine blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this magenta into this blue. I'm going to leave a little magenta left over because I want to use it for my bead later. So just a nice big blob of purple in the center. Just like that. Just an equal amount. So whatever you pull of the um, the magenta, pull the same amount from the ultramarine blue. All right. 
Once you get that mixed, just set your purple brush to the side because we're going to go right back in for it in just a moment. All right, I think, let's see, I want you to mix some white, just a nice little thing of white. Put my white on a separate plate just to keep it clean. So I'm going to bring some white over to my raw sienna. And that's our bread. That's going to be the inside of the king cake. So you just blend that up. And then you can put just a little touch of burnt umber. Oh yeah, that looks like cake. There we go. And there is one more color. And y'all, I'm, I'm going to use like several different brushes. So just have your brushes out and ready to work. So the next color I'm going to mix, I'm going to make a nice yellow green. So that is going to be your grass green and your cad yellow. So just pull some of that yellow and then pull some of that green and just blend. It looks like the icing of the king cake already. All right, that's pretty. Look at that. So, and I'm just gonna keep this brush filled with the green. Because we do this in such a short time, you really can't mess your brushes up by leaving them out with paint on it. Now, when you finish, the first thing you wanna do is wash your brushes and make sure that they're good to go and clean. So, first things first. Since we have our black outline, I wanna go ahead and do the fence. So, I'm grabbing, I'm gonna put anything that's purple, except for the medallions and the beads, I'm gonna go ahead and paint purple because Whenever we apply our yellow, we don't want our purple and yellow mixing. They're complementary colors. So when they mix together, they'll start creating a black and we already have black. So we want these colors to be vibrant and pretty. All right, so I just took a blob of purple. Y'all know the routine. Just plop it down. Go ahead and just start plopping. away so everything about this squiggly line is the fence okay so plop 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 now I'm gonna take another brush I'm gonna wet it a little bit I'm using an old worn brush this is actually one of my favorite brushes but it works for the way that I paint so I'm gonna grab some of this white we want the fence to look faded, so we are going to just plop it in there. Now it's going to get a little purple on it, and that's fine. Now that works. Now we're going to do one more thing. I'm going to put that in the water because I don't want it to stay purple. We're going to do one more thing. I'm actually going to use, yeah, I'm going to use my purple brush. So whatever brush you have with your purple on it, go in just for a little bit of black. And then pull in some of that purple. And we're going to make like this purplish black. It's really pretty. It looks like a, a midnight sky. So pull some black in, a little bit more purple. All right, it's like a deep violet and you're going to just plop that along the bottom of the fence. Okay, so just plop it right along the bottom of the fence. Okay. All right. You could fill it in a little bit, that's fine. That looks 
good already. So, what we are going to do next, I bet y'all can guess what we're about to do next. Paper top time. So go ahead and dunk it. Give it a good squeeze. Don't let it stay dry, but you don't want it soft and wet. Just let it be damp. Just a nice damp paper towel will be just fine. And go ahead and just wipe. And you should still be able to see your black lines. Now, if you can't, then we'll just have to go back over it again. But you can easily add those. And don't try to smooth it perfectly. It's a fence. It's supposed to look a little raggedy with all these different faded colors in it from being worn. So we're just going to just move it around. And you will get purple on yourself today. It's okay. There we go. Let's see. Let's add a little bit more white. So we want it really faded looking and we're just gonna plop that. And we're going to wipe again. It's more like twisting. Like, I don't know, like a little. Let's see. It's like you just want to blend it in an area that it's in. And it's okay if you leave some of the white. Right now, we have our background going, our fence. So next step, let's start icing the cake. I'm excited about this. So actually, before we ice in the cake, we are going to put the bread filler in. So how do we do that? We are going to need. We are going to use raw sienna and white, and we're gonna make the bread. <laughs> So, the bread is right, well, it's all bread, but follow this line on the top. Now, I know it's not easy to see. Okay, then bring it down. There we are. All right, and this is actually going to be purple. So go around the medallion. And wherever you see these little swirls, all these swirls, that's where you're going to put the raw sienna and white. Now, we'll come back to that and play with it a bit more. You can bring that down here. Okay. So, and don't worry if you smear it up with the wrong color because we can fix that. So, let's see. We said we we're going to do all things purple, so let's get back to that. So, this is the cake. We have a little outline of purple going around the raw sienna. Just like that. And then bring it down. All right, go back in for some more purple. Let's see. So the cake is sliced. Everyone's cake is sliced differently. 
and everyone's king cake looks a little differently because I freehanded it. So go ahead. It doesn't have to be in any perfect order, but I'd say two slices are purple, or maybe a little sliver of yellow, and then two slices are green. So you can put this in any order that you want to. This is just the way I'm going to do it now. So they look like little triangles with the outline. So just pick one. I'm going to pick this one first. And I'm just, it's like a coloring book. I'm just going to paint the inside of it. Just like that. And then just bring it down. All of these colors are going to flow into the other. All right. And then let's see. I'm going to use my little last, my end piece with the purple icing. I like the green icing myself, but we're going to use this purple for the end piece. All right, and what else? Oh, one of the medallions are purple. So I said all things purple. We're just going to get purple out the way because when you Get purple blended with the colors we're using. It's just, it's not super cute. And it's okay if you don't stay in a line. So you can fix that. All right, so we have our purple icing. Now we can actually put the purple brush in the water and we are going to go for some green, the yellow green. Now we're gonna do all things green. So I'm gonna take this big centerpiece here and I'm just going to, and if you end up with some texture, leave it. And then I'm going to put some green over here in that little area where I messed up. Look, I'm gonna cover it up with some green. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to leave a little space in between here because I'm going to put my yellow right there and then I'm going to put some yellow right here. Okay. So with the green, go in for some more, get a big blob of it and we're going to start plopping. We're going to do the brown. This is the grass. Okay. And you can pull a little yellow into that. And go ahead and get your paper towel ready. This is a shadow, but I'm going to come back to it because I want the under um, laying part to be green. So let's see. We'll get some more purple. Now go behind your cake. Okay, just plop, plop, plop. Now we're gonna go in for a paper towel. Okay, don't use your purple paper towel. Let's get a new one. Here, I'm gonna get a new one back here. All right, we're gonna dunk it. Give it a squeeze. All 
right? Don't let it be soft and wet. And we're just gonna dab. We want it to look like a sunny day. So, we'll go around. I think some of you only have one medallion on the ground, but like I said, you can add more. So, go around it. And you can go up to the cake. And then there's that behind you. The king cake and the fence. So you're gonna dab behind the king cake and up the bottom of the fence. So that's gonna be green. Yeah. Things will become more tangible whenever we isolate it. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and get the grass out the way. Okay, so now Emily is not cooperating. That's all right. All right, so next we're gonna add the yellow. We're gonna add the yellow icing. Go ahead and get yourself a clean brush or wash the brush that you're using. Let's see. I'm gonna actually wash my uh, my burnt sienna brush, my raw sienna brush. Okay. Make sure it's clean though. We don't want to muddy the yellow. We want it to be vibrant and bright. So I'm coming in for my yellow. Now I'm going to grab a good scoop of this. So if you actually, if you have a palette knife, you can use this too, if you're comfortable with it. But if you're not comfortable with it, just use your brush and you're just going to just kind of inch it along. We're going to keep it with that texture because we want it to look like a blob of icing, but we also want it to stand out against that purple and that green. So you're just gonna put it on there. Now it's a little unconventional because we're not actually painting it on, we're plopping it on. And we're gonna plop it on again on the other side of the cake. So I got another scoop, it's literally a scoop of yellow. And just plop it on and make sure it stays where you want it. We're adding some texture here. and just bring it on down. Okay, and look, you can actually go right on this line here. I mean, on the king cakes, the icing's all over the place. And they kind of melt in the middle. So that's what we're gonna aim for. Let's see, and I wanna bring this yellow all the way back. There's really no wrong way to ice in the cake. So, let that encourage you if you think you've messed up. You can't really mess up this painting. All right, so we have our big blob of yellow, how it's just really standing out. Now, we're gonna actually add, let's see, Hmm. I'm gonna actually finish off the rest of the yellow that's on the brush instead of instead of just washing it off. Let's use it. Just blend it into the grass. Just quickly, you can leave blocks of it. That's fine. Just blend it in. All right. Now you can clean your brush. So. Now we can go ahead, let's refine the cake some. 
we really want it to look like a cake. So I'm going back in for my raw sienna, but I'm just going to get raw sienna and I actually want to get a little bit yellow. And I'm going to blend that up and then I'm going to pull some of my burnt umber into this. And then we're going to take one more step. I want you to take a little black, just a little speck of black, blend that up. And let's go back in and try to highlight these. We're going to emphasize the shadows. So we're going to go here. So if you can't see your lines, that's okay. You can draw some more. And everybody's painting will look different. So we have that brown. I'm gonna add a bit more black to it. And maybe a little touch of magenta. Yeah. All right, so just kind of go over it again. Yep, that's what we want. You wanna create these little trickles almost. Like you're looking deep inside the, the king cake. All right, so I'm going to say what I just did again. I mixed the raw sienna with the burnt umber, and I pulled some yellow into it. And then I took that color, and I brought it over to my black, and I added a little bit of magenta, okay? All right. It has this raspberry chocolatey look to it. Let's do the other side. All right, we're just going around. There we go, that looks good. And then I want you to add a little more black to your brush. And then I want you to outline the edge. So right where the purple ends or whatever color you have on your end piece of king cake, outline it in this dark chocolatey brown black looking color. And then I want you to go ahead and pull it down to the bottom. All right, we're gonna take that same color don't clean your brush, just take your brush and dip it in your purple black little spot that you created. And if it's all gone, then just add a little bit black, a little of your black to your purple again. All right. So now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So just go around the edge. It's right where the icing ends, where you're gonna add this dark color. All right. Now we're gonna take it a step further. So y'all see that squiggly line that we have here? That's our shadow. We're gonna go ahead and fill it in, just like that. All right. So let's see what we have here. Yep. There we go. So we're going to take that same color and we just want to pull it in the middle. Kind of just outline what we have. Like where all those colors kind of run together. All right, let's clean that up. So I want to go back over it with some more green. We're kind of building it up layer by layer. So you can get a kind of a bigger blob than the last time. And we're gonna plop it on there like we did the yellow. We want texture on this. So the paint should be lifted up on the surface 
of your canvas. So you can pull that down and then go to your other green spot and just kind of plop it on there. See, I'm not using enough green, so I'm gonna really get some. And I'm just gonna plop it on there, like so, and bring it down. There we go. All right, so what are we doing next? Let's go to our purple. There we go. Just get you a good bit of purple, get you a nice little blob. See, we're just gonna scoop a purple. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just lay it on heavy. Don't try to paint it, just plop it. And then just bring it on down. All of those colors run together in the middle. There we go. All right, we're gonna do the other side. Just plop it on there. Go. Yep, we got ourselves a little king cake, y'all. All right. So, the next steps that we have, we're going to add the icing to the king cake, but before we do that, we're going to let it sit for a while. So, while that is sitting, we're going to go ahead and add all of our beads, and then we can add some little grass, all right? So, and I do want to go over the lines in the fence. So while you have your purple on your brush, go ahead and just get some black. You don't have to clean it. Just get that purple as black violet. And just go over your lines one more time. You want them to kind of stand out. And then go ahead and get your paper towel ready. And it's supposed to be wonky looking. You know, we're trying to get the feel of carnival on the painting. So let's grab your purple damp paper towel and just rub it in up and down. There we go. Yep, and that's it. That's it for that. All right. So let's go do our beads. Now, Thank you. if you have a round brush, this isn't really a round brush. This is just a very angled, long brush. So a round brush will work perfectly for this, but I'm gonna use this one. So whatever you have, that's not just a flat square, use it. So go ahead, plop it in some water, give it a wipe on your paper towel. Let's see, so my first set of beads, are gonna be yellow. So you can put these beads over your fence any way you choose, but I'll show you how I'm doing mine. So this one over here is gonna look like a figure eight. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna leave that thick paint. You're just gonna tap it, plop it basically. We're plopping paint in a little shape. So let's see. I'm going down. It's going to look a little different than that one. And then I'm going to bring it up. So this paint, this painting has a lot of texture. So we really just want to touch and move on. We're not trying to make it a certain way. We just we're allowing the texture to emphasize the character of the painting. So just plop it in there. All right, so there's one bead. 
I really like how this is really plopping out. So there's my yellow bead for now. We're gonna come back to it and add all of the characteristics to make it look like a bead. I'm gonna clean my brush and then I'm gonna use green. But you can do white, you can do any color on your palette, you can turn into a bead. So if you want some bright, permanent uh, magenta beads, you can plop some permanent magenta beads on your canvas. So I am going to do green. And I'm actually gonna use that darker green that we've been using to mix our yellow green. All right. So I'm just gonna make a little, little design and let it come around the king cake. Just pop that one up there. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I really want that texture to pop out. I'm just laying this paint on thick today. That's all we're doing. All right, so there's another B, but let's wait a moment before we add that B. All right, so we have our beads up. Clean your brush. You wanna get the green off because I'm about to go right back into my yellow. And I'm gonna grab a good scoop of white. So I've got white on my brush and I'm gonna just Put it right on top of that yellow, just like that. No special way, I'm just plopping it. I'm gonna get a little bit more and I'm gonna keep on plopping. I'm gonna, yep, just like that. All right, let's see. You can actually, you can actually keep your brush just the same and just go right in between that green. Yep, that works. Now we have the other bead that we're gonna wrap around the cake, but we're gonna do that probably last, okay? And let's see, I'm gonna actually clean my brush in the grass. So you can just clean your brush on the canvas and then take your little green damp paper towel and just smudge it in. Call that a day. All right. So next up, we are going to add our icing, our white icing. Now I'm going to use, I like this brush, so I'm going to use this brush for my white. But we're going to do the same thing that we did with the green and the purple icing and the yellow icing. We're going to lay it on thick and we're going to just kind of plop it on there. So I'm going to grab a big scoop of white. And I just want to literally sit it on top of the green. We want it to look like icing. Just pull it down. It's messy. It's a little all over the place. It's okay. Get you some more white and get a scoop of it. Just you just really just pressing it on top of these colors. In no certain way. We just want the white icing on there. There we go. I'm going to get some right over here. Try not to cover up your black line. All right. There we go. I love that texture right there. All right. So now, y'all, 
it's gonna get a bit more exciting because I didn't put glitter on this one, but I wanna put some glitter on this one, okay? So, we're not gonna do that just yet. Let's go ahead and finish the last bead. And I want to work into here. Just a little bit more. All right. So we have this medallion here, this medallion here, and then we have the bead that's gonna come around. So clean your brush. I am going in, I have two golds here. I have like an old gold, and then I have a metallic bronze gold. Add you some raw sienna. And y'all, if you don't have raw sienna brown, a light brown is all it is. It's just a very light, light brown maybe with a little touch of red in it. So I'm gonna take that raw sienna and I'm gonna grab some of this bright gold and I'm gonna pull it in. And then a little bit of that metallic bronze. It's gonna really give it that coin look. So I'm gonna grab a good bit of that. And like all things in this painting, we're just gonna plop it down. And I'm gonna make this coin. If you have two coins, or if you want two coins, just add whatever you're doing to this coin to the other coin behind, the purple one. There we go. And if you need to clean up, that's all right. Just get a damp paper towel and There we go. So I want to add some yellow to that. So I'm gonna go over it with yellow. Now you see I wrote in here, I use a fine point Sharpie for that. I did that once it dried. Now these coins can be whatever color you want. They have the green ones, the pink ones, bright, bright yellow, blue. So don't limit yourself to just my palette if you wanna branch out some. All right, so we have our coin. I want to, actually, I'm gonna keep this on my brush. I'm gonna go in for a little bit of white. And I just want to refine this. The inside of the cake. So it's like you just add a few little highlights to it. All right. Yep, that works for me. Okay, clean your brush. You're gonna get your round brush and we're gonna plop some more with some beads. I am going to use my magenta. Grabbing a scoop of it, a scoop of magenta. And so these are going all over the place, right? So we just want them to lay over the cake. So I am going to actually just start plopping. I'm starting here. I'm going to work my way up. Make sure you have plenty of magenta because you want it to sit on top of that yellow. Just like so. All right, bring it around. Bring it through. And then bring it up again. You know how your beads get all tangled up? That's all we're doing is making a very tangled up bead. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Okay. So you can go back over it again. 
And wherever you put a dot, we're going to go back over it with some white. So I'm going to take my same brush. I'm just going to plop it in my white. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. We want the impression of a bee. So this is giving us that impression that we have a tangled bead wrapped around our king cake. Okay. And don't worry too much of the bead that's going over your cake. Let's just focus on the ones that are outside of it. Alrighty. So I have my tangled beads. I have my medallions. Okay. Now the last step, I want to add my grass. So just get a flat brush and just make some little swift lines going up. Okay, just go up and then add a little bit of your yellow green. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back dark. Just a little quick strokes in our impressionistic painting. There we go. Okay. Now, look at your painting. Decide what else would you work on. So, if I just had all day long, I would sit here and I would work on my grass. I would just keep adding more purple to my fence and more white until I just got this really faded looking fence. You're seeking out a characteristic, so you want to make it as Mardi Gras as possible. So you got to think Mardi Gras, like the grass is usually all grungy from everybody walking all over the place. So you could add a little purple brown looking marks to it, which we can easily do here. Just a few little plops. Then let's see, we can add some back here. And then we can take our damp napkin and just kind of smudge it in. Just make it a little grungy. All right, so I promised glitter and I am going to deliver some glitter. I am using a gold glitter medium. I love it. So I'm going to open this up. So if you do have, you can get this at Hobby Lobby. So if you do have access to this, I'm gonna get a fresh brush just to clean. It doesn't have to be any kind of shape. I'm gonna just scoop it in. And I want this glitter. Where do I want my glitter? Dare I put it on a king cake? We can go for it. Yeah. Just plop it on. It could be our sprinkles. Now I know some of you have little jars of glitter, so whenever you're done, if you don't have this medium, take those little jars of glitter and just shake it all over the place, okay? I'm going to add some glitter to my medallion, and I'm going to clean that up a bit. There we go. All right, let's see, you can add a little black to your grass just to create a few shadows. Okay. And you can even add a little yellow. There we go. Now we've got some grass. Okay. Hmm. I think I would add a little bit of white. 
from the grass into the fence. And I'm just blend that in. And you are done. Very good, y'all. I know these paintings are gonna look so beautiful.